with Dr. John Rady. Thank you so much for coming to visit us. And uh, of course, author of Spark, a revolutionary book, uh, professor at, uh, at Harvard. Um, what, what, have, what have, early on in, in the first couple of years, what kind of feedback have you been getting on this revolutionary thought process? Well, <clears throat> I think once people begin to understand what the message is, which is basically something that's common sense, but uh, what I did is translate uh, about a thousand articles of neuroscience or brain science into readable, understandable uh, language so that people can understand what exercise is doing for their brains and to their brains, which is all to the positive. And how we've gotten away from that uh, kind of activity because our world has evolved and changed. And therefore we're seeing a lot of the lifestyle problems that are turning into lifestyle diseases, so the cardiac problems and many of the cancers even, uh, obesity, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease as well as uh, the explosion in the diagnosis of depression, anxiety, and attention deficit disorder, as well as many of the addictions um, are caused by our sedentary lifestyle. And, and you talk and enlighten a lot around lifestyle and um, the benefits, and the neurological benefits of getting moving, uh, whether it be in the workplace setting or uh, I guess pretty much anywhere, is there, even considering socioeconomic status, is there anything to stop us from moving? No, there's nothing, and uh, even, I mean, socioeconomic status has really very little to do with it, just certainly if uh, people are fed enough, uh, they have energy enough uh, to be moving, and uh, one way to climb up the socioeconomic ladder is to, is to move. Absolutely. Um, what do you think the, the challenges are? What, what is your, your current research uh, based on uh, moving forward? Well, the big challenge is getting people to uh, change the way they think about exercise and play. And it's something that we all need to do, and we need to know that we need to do it, and we need to do it for our brains as well as our bodies. It's very clear we need to be trip fit for our bodies to live longer and be uh, better functioning, but so too does our brains. And, and so much of the focus is uh, uh, the benefit of exercise expressly inherently to the brain and, and for people to really come to appreciate that uh, you know we're doing it as much to keep ourselves, our, our brain function stimulated, heightened, optimized, and you talk about the different re regions of the brain as well. Right, I think there's overwhelming evidence that this is the, the case that the best way to manage our emotions as well as improve our cognitive capacity and keep it uh, is to be, be a chronic mover. And uh, just one or two more things, if I may. Uh, uh, you know, you talked about the, the sedentariness of, of technology now and how that's affected the uh, youth um, and it can lead to addictive behaviors. And uh, just as a, a prevent, uh, almost uh, an awareness towards it being, uh, you know, for, for parents to, to be aware of this. Uh, it's just really, you know, it's fascinating in terms of uh, autistic or uh, attention deficit disorder and a whole host of uh, disorders and, and the benefits there. Um, and this is uh, really important information to know. I think so. I, I think that a lot of our disorders today, uh, psychiatric disorders, mental disorders, really come from our lifestyle difference. Uh, to video games and to TV and to texting and living a second life on Facebook. It, uh, it's a real problem and people need to be aware of it. At least uh, it may have an impact on, on our kids and on their future. Uh, last one is, is uh, 
partially self-indulgent uh, where I, I've uh, learned from, from some other professors around the research of biofeedback and, and brain waves. What, what kind of uh, research have, have you done, uh, say, or been a part of, uh, whether it be with professional athletes and how they, you know, uh, are, are so well honed and well tuned, both mind and body for movement, that you can see different parts of the brain? Well, I think the, 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 it's fairly clear the more practice an individual is, which is really what you're talking about, is very high functioning uh, super athletes. You know, one of the distinctions about them is that they love to practice. That's, they love to practice because they know what they're doing. Uh, that they're, they're, and basically, they're honing in their brain so they don't have to use much brain power or additional brain power to do what they're doing. They're doing it much more in automatic pilot when they're in the so-called zone. And you see that when they're, they're spending more time in alpha rhythm, which is just a way of measuring sort of the evenness of the brain waves. And, uh, they're sort of observing themselves with pleasure. And just in conclusion, we're here in, in Burlington, Ontario, and, and looking at as we discuss here now, uh, from a societal pr perspective going forward, in terms of prevention and getting the, the advocacy out there and, and, and the, the right network of people, be it professionals or uh, you know, healthcare practitioners and, and, and government, to an ear towards prevention and healthcare costs and, uh, you know, uh, are we, what, what gains are we making towards having a captive audience and getting the message out? Well, I think we're not making much in the gains in the way at all. I think the you know the recent advertising blitz that that probably will continue about the the biggest loser in, the, 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 in our country, Michelle Obama, is uh, uh, trying to get people to pay attention to what they're eating and sort of the, the world sort of being aware of this obesity crisis that we're all involved in. Um, you know, so we don't kill ourselves. Um, I think it's it's been a hard road, and, and people have a hard time changing, and that's why I think the focus has to be on the schools, because otherwise it's over. Uh, I guess the uh, clever thing would to, to you know to thank you would be to say uh, thanks for walking, keep on walking, and uh, uh, thanks for for all your research. Thank you for having me.